Oh, pardon me, drinking a cup of coffee. Good morning, everyone. The bathroom renovation project rolls on Saturday, August 23rd. You know, it doesn't probably doesn't seem like it to you, but uh, we're actually pretty close to completing this uh, project. And we're, we're at the point now where we're prepping the walls and ceiling and uh, the floor and the shower stall getting ready to set tall and uh, do painting. You know, in seven weeks, we've come a long way, okay, just working Saturdays and Sundays and an occasional Wednesday. Some people have said it takes a long time to do it. Well, would you consider that the average bathroom remodel, if you hire a contractor, is going to take two to three weeks, and they're, never, they're hardly ever going to change out plumbing or electrical okay they're just basically going to uh, give you new wall surfaces and new flooring and all that and maybe a new sink maybe a new toilet but when you consider what we've done on this project we have basically had to rebuild the floor underneath of the toilet we had to lower the floor level for the shower so we could have a uh, shower that would basically when it was done be on the same level as the uh, floor and still have some slope for the drain. drain. We're talking about major engineering work. We had to redo all the plumbing, move the sewer pipe for the toilet, move the drains for the sink, uh, install a shower. We had to put the, uh, all of that plumbing had to be done and then we pulled new electrical service, uh, you know, put recessed lights in, put up the uh, cement board. We also had to cut out and put a new window in here and that was a big job getting that done and now we're at the point where we're sort of getting our uh, moving to the point where we can do some finishes here and everything like that so it's exciting times today's going to be messy again going to be sanding the uh, well i'll bring in we'll talk about what we're going to do on uh wednesday i was able to uh put the lights in up there and get them roughed in we had the uh, one for the main part of the bathroom here and then we had the uh, lights in for the uh, shower stall and I was also uh, put the uh, was able to put a skim coat on the ceiling there so today I want to sand this down and that'll be basically ready for uh, priming at that point I want to turn my attention to the uh, shower stall I need to mount we bought a uh, silver strip what they call a Schluter profile here it's going, it's going to look beautiful. On one side is going to be the uh, drywall, finished drywall, and the other side is going to be the towel. And this forms a beautiful brushed nickel finish. Um, a beautiful dividing point for that. So I'm very excited about putting that in. But we've got to do some small things to uh, prep the shower for tiling. I've also got to put a little piece of uh, filler in there where the uh, fan was, it's virtually impossible to cut a piece of uh, sheet rock with that uh, thin a piece to fit in there. I guess the real super pros can, I couldn't. So, and then we're gonna turn to uh, finishing this niche. We're gonna put the uh, cement board in here, the hardy backer board. Uh, and then we're gonna turn our attention to uh, waterproofing. We're gonna remove any screws that are higher than the uh, surface. We don't want anything interfering with the tall set here. I've also built up the level next to the uh, windows here so that the tiles will lay uh, nice and flat and not want to curve in towards the uh, window. And the waterproofing is going to be uh, very important. And I want to say a few words uh, about that because it's, uh, it's critical. You know, guys, when you, uh, when you waterproof a shower, there's really no such thing. Is truly waterproof maybe with some of the fiberglass stalls and things like we have in the outbuilding it's true but when you have a walk-in shower like this a custom one it's inevitable that you're going to have uh, leaks so if you remember when we uh, designed the uh, floor of the shower we put in, we had the wooden base which was below floor level here then we put the uh, metal screening down on that and we put the uh, we put that builder's paper down. We put the metal screen and we put the mortar on top of it. We sloped that good and we let that uh, set. And then later, about a week or so later, we came back. We put the rubber, uh, the vinyl liner on there, the very thick vinyl liner, and uh, put that up the side so it's one continuous uh, piece of vinyl under it. 
Then we put more mortar on top of that and we sloped it towards the uh, drain. Now the theory is any mortar that leaks behind the uh, tiles uh, or leaks through the uh, cracks in the floor will will hit that first moisture level barrier there, that vinyl liner, and then go towards the drain where we have what's called the weep holes where that water will go down. So theoretically these walls should stay uh, very dry because we're going to be seaming them with a uh, special fiber tape from Schluter, a German company that makes really good uh, products. We're going to be sealing that and then we're going to be uh, overcoating. All the joints are going to be sealed down here and then uh, we're going to put the uh, overcoat the whole shower stall with what they call Red Guard, and that's a really good uh, sealer. Not only does it uh, waterproof, but it's also a crack isolation membrane, which means when it dries, if the walls shift and all that, it has the ability to move a little bit too without cracking. But I want to tell you when, you, when you make a shower stall, these two walls meet here at the intersection, and even though it's taped and everything, you know, it's almost inevitable that uh, if we weren't to take special, if we were not to take special precautions, it would crack. It's going to crack anyway. But the thing is, the thing that makes it different is, and this is the mistake most people make, is they grout their corners and they grout to the floor tile. You never want to do that because both of those surfaces are moving independent of each other and it's inevitable that you're going to have cracks because of expansion and contraction. So you need something that's going to float in there and mortar will not float. It's basically uh, like concrete once it sets. So the deal is we don't want to grout joints. We want to have a matching caulk that we fill in the uh, corners and the floor. And that way the floors, the uh, walls can move independently of each other and the uh, floor and that caulk will expand slightly and contract and we won't have leaks. That's how you have a, a waterproof shower. Lecture's over. It's time to get I to I decided work. to start with the uh, niche today because uh, you know, I'm not much on cutting out the, the cement backer board, but the hardy backer board cuts really well. And you know, they give you a scoring knife to uh, use. You can't really use a... Um, a box cutter knife because that gets dull after about three or four swipes. They give you, they sell a scoring tool. And then one thing I discovered, these heavy uh, whisk shears, these things are incredible for cutting at the score line and doing a clean uh, cut. Anyway, uh, the niches are important because shampoo and things sits in here and it has to be waterproof and can't, uh, can't leak. So. One of the uh, first things I had to do was uh, fit the cement board in there, which you can see. And I'm, I've got the uh, sides all done, and now I'm going to be uh, fit the uh, bottom piece in there. And that's so tight, that's basically a uh, press fit in there. And I'm going to take the uh, mud and tape and uh, mud these up tonight so that they can dry overnight. And then uh, tomorrow we're going to put the uh, waterproof tape on and uh, waterproof all that because we got to make sure we don't have any uh, leaks in there. The uh, sizing is good, all perfectly square on the inside. And I'm going to go ahead and just fit this top back piece and then we'll move on. Alright, the niche is roughed in. It's now just a matter of uh, taking the uh, drywall tape and doing our initial uh, corners and everything and uh, make sure it's all ready for uh, putting the uh, special tape on tomorrow and we should be uh, should be good to go both of the uh, niches are now complete and i've got the uh, taped and mudded real good so uh, i'm going to let that uh, dry real good overnight and then tomorrow it'll be a uh, just a simple matter of giving a, a quick uh, rough sanding overall and then we'll be applying the uh, waterproofing, the red guard, with the uh, tape in there, taping the corners. And uh, finally on Wednesday, after all the uh, seams are taped and overcoated, we're going to come back and uh, basically overcoat the whole shower with the uh, red guard. So now I'm moving on to the, uh, I want to move on to the walls here. I went ahead and did a little more build up around the window. Some of the um, cement board wanted to sort of curve in towards the window, so I've, I've used some mud progressively over the last couple days 
to sort of build that up so it's a perfectly flat plane to accept the uh, tile. So what I want to do now is take a break from this. I'm going to uh, sand down the uh, sand down the uh, the uh, taping and mudding that I did in here, and then uh, go ahead and I may uh, uh, then sand down the ceiling and then prime that. So we'll be uh, we'll be all ready f uh, for tomorrow or whenever we want to do the final coating on the ceiling. But tomorrow I want to make sure everything's done so we can concentrate strictly on the work. Don't over sand. Get, get the uh, top knocked off. I see a lot of people when they're doing uh, sanding they take off the uh, take off the uh, sheet rock covering. You don't want to do that. No, because it'll look weird when you paint it. It can get pretty bad guys, especially I'm using a uh, quarter cable sort of uh, hand sander here, palm sander. Uh, makes it very light work, but uh, kicks up a lot of schmutz in the air, as you can see. So I'm getting ready to uh, start the ceiling now. I'm going to start over in the uh, over in the shower area and then work my way over. And this will be the last sanding for the ceiling. Make sure you're wearing a respirator. Ooh, it's like being in a blizzard, huh? Well, the ceiling is about half done. I've done the shower area now. And now I'm moving into the main part. Ooh! Luckily, uh, when you're doing remodeling work, you only get a couple days like this where you got to put up with the uh, schmutz. Not many warm in my air today anyway, so it doesn't much matter. Okay, just make sure you have a nice yes, right right book today. <laughs> I know Jen's not real happy today with the uh, cleanup, but we're only going to have probably one more day like this, and then we're going to be uh, paint priming and uh, painting. So tomorrow will be uh, will be the touch up day and the waterproofing. And uh, the drywall laid so well, I don't even think it's going to need uh, skin coating anymore. It was really good. So that's going to probably be the end of our last massive sanding there. Okay. Alright guys, kind of a short day today, but thanks for being here. You know, stuff happens when you're uh, doing renovation projects, so always wear your respirator.